Now though, we're off to meet with Christina Chalmers, who set up a Facebook page called Please Join Me in Helping Cork's Homeless. Christina and her team of volunteers aim to help the homeless of Cork who don't make it into a shelter at night and equip them with items that they badly need. Christina, you set up the Facebook page. Can you tell us why you set it up? Basically, my sister called around and she told me that she was going out to give out some blankets. She was going to go into the city on her own to do it. And I said to her, like, if she hold off till the weekend, I'd go in with her, you know, just so that she wouldn't be doing it because it was quite unsafe to go out on her own. By the time we finished up, it's quarter to six in the morning. Uh, we had bedded down 36 people in doorways and I knew like these people are here not just at Christmas time all year round and I just knew I had to come back. So we have a group of volunteers that come out um, ever since, about maybe 50 to 60 people on a, uh, on a regular basis and I just divide them up into groups with my team members and send them out with the team members to a designated area to comb the streets and just ask them how are they doing today. What you need to do is ask them if they have a bed for the night. If they say they don't have a bed for the night, um, just take note of where they are, their location, and come back after the 30, 40 minutes and let me know where they are because I'll be going out on a sleepy bag assessment and I'll be bedding them down with the team. So come down to their level, give them eye contact, give them respect and dignity because they're all people just like you and I. You know, it could happen to any one of us any day of the week. So I just thank everybody for being here tonight. We have like a street cafe set up there where they can come up, they can sit down, speak with a team member, get listened to and have a voice more than anything else because they're not used to people giving them time. And behind every one of them is a human being, a person who deserves respect and dignity and a very sad story as well. Christina introduced us to Sean, who lost his wife a few years ago and has a very serious health condition. When Christina realised just how serious Sean's condition was, she called on support from local businesses and individuals to help her organise a dream trip for Sean to visit his favourite team Liverpool in Anfield. She was also able to get in contact with Liverpool legend Ian Rush, who met up with Sean during his last trip to Cork. Well, I'll never forget when I go on to Anfield, a trip of a lifetime for all these lovely girls that do me. I mean that. And to me, the in was unbelievable. She a legend. When I seen him, I cried. She says, Christina, here he is now. She says, I cried like a baby. She got him. He squeezed my hand. She a one of us. I thought I couldn't see the, the light in the tunnel, you know, I can't remember. But there was a light there. And there was a light up there when I got up there. Awfully. A big lace. Every night that I'm out and I hear a story and I think, you know, this is the worst I've heard, but every single time I come back I still hear more and more and I'm just constantly shocked. When I think I've been shocked completely, it never fails to shock me again and again, over and over. Jonathan, you're one of the coordinators of this now. You've been with them since the very beginning. Yep. Um, tell me, why did you get involved and what have you seen throughout your time here? Um, I got involved for personal reasons because my brother uh, was homeless for a number of years and he was uh, an addict, a heroin addict. So obviously I had a personal interest in it. Um, in my time here, I've seen everything. I've seen funny, I've seen sad, I've seen people who are just down on their luck. I've seen people, unfortunately, who are dead in doorways. Um, it's a pretty harrowing experience you know like as a member of Leinster House and as a TD we discuss homelessness all the time but it's nothing like the reality of going out and meeting people on the streets um, from all different walks of life um, I think everyone's only one pay packet away from being on the streets and that's that's an unfortunate reality of our society today. I've been homeless for the last six weeks um, at the moment we're living in a squat at the end of the day, we have each other you know, to keep each other going. Like, you know, he's keeping me safe. I try my best to keep him oh, safe. Because I, I lost the mother of my kids a year and a half ago in a car crash. And then I met her then. If you didn't meet him, do you think you'd be OK as, as a female on your own in the city? I no, I wouldn't feel safe. Yeah. And that's, even though I'm Irish and I'm a Cork City woman myself, but no, I wouldn't be safe on the streets on my own. Have you applied for, for housing? Have you applied for different things? Can I'm on the housing, I'm the housing list at the moment for the last three years. I'm still waiting. We have 361 houses right now tonight. 
that are bordered up around Cox City. We've got buildings that are lying empty, that are owned by the government, by the council, by NAMA, and we leave these lying empty tonight. And we have people sleeping in doorways. The question we have to ask ourselves is, what kind of country do we want to live in? And like you go back to, there's, there's been a lot of commemorations and parades and everything for 1916 and the men and women and the vision and the proclamation. But do you think this is what the men and women of 1916 fought for? I don't think it is. These were men and women of principle who cared. You read the proclamation. It must be one of the greatest documents in the history of Ireland, if not the world. We have a great country. The Irish people are a great people. If we, just, if we could just get the elites not to be as selfish and to be more inclusive, like, no one should have to sleep in the doorway. If you want to come with me across the road, there's a better doorway. Well, if there's no such thing as a better doorway, like, but like you won't get much, you've no room to manoeuvre. I'm just going to move them to see because that doorway isn't good enough at all. Like it steps, so there's, yeah. a, there's a safer doorway down along here. So you know it actually, I do, yeah. yeah. The, like I kind of know the doorways now. Yeah. There's um, like security cameras there, so nobody's, it's highly unlikely he'd be attacked there, like, you know. I actually, I loved it from the first time I came out here to actually be able to help people and to see the gratitude that you get off of these people who are on the street 24-7. If it's not walking around the city, it's in a shelter somewhere or in a doorway somewhere. And like, it breaks my heart to see it when you see like all the empty houses, the boarded up houses that we have around Cork City alone. To see that there's so many people on the streets of the city that need help, it's, it's actually disgraceful to see it. Because only for the likes of Christina Chalmers and helping Cork's homeless, there'll be nothing here for these people. Now, keep that inside to keep you warm, OK? Era, everybody deserves a bit of respect, by. I firmly believe that counsellors and psychologists should be brought in as early as seven, eight and nine into schools to teach children it's okay to talk about your feelings. Regarding the economical homeless, um, basically rents need to be reduced, rent allowance needs to be increased and landlords shouldn't be allowed to refuse people on the rent allowance HAP scheme. It's 2am now and groups are still roaming the streets, bedding people down, giving them hot water bottles and hot drinks. They're an amazing cause and an amazing group of volunteers showed up tonight to help the people in Cork who need it most. We're off to a quick break now but we'll be right back after this.